Hi everyone, Kate is here and today I'm going to show you how to output the information that a user submitted via the form to a thank you page. But before that, please make sure to like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so yet, okay? So guys, shall we get started? Here's what you'll get after setting up the form at the back end. Once the form is submitted, all required information will be shown on the thank you page in the blink of an eye. So in today's video, we will be using Jet Engine, Jet Form Builder, and Elementor plugins. And to start off, you'll need to create a thank you page first. For that, go to Pages, Add New, I have mine created already, so I'll just open it with Elementor. And as you can see, here I've added two sections, one with a thank you message and another one with a layout to which soon we will add dynamic widgets that will help us to pull the information from submitted form. Right now, let's go back to the dashboard and open form settings to see what fields are available for our use. Go to Jet from Builder, Forms, and open the one you plan on using. I'll be working with the new post form today. So let's open it. Here on the left side, we see all the form fields and we can click on any one of them to see more detailed information here in the right side block settings column. What we need to do now is open Jet Form Settings tab and add a new post submit action to the form. Redirect to page. OK. Now click on the little pencil icon to edit the action and here in the drop down select Static Page from the list. Next, select Thank You Page. And right here at the bottom, check mark all necessary form fields, the information from which you want to be transferred to a thank you page on the form submission. I'll go for the thumbnail, title and location, transfer type and year, as well as body type and mileage, engine type and capacity, transmission and drive unit, door, color, and price, and of course, car description, which is post content. Okay, the fields are selected and we can update the action settings, as well as update the form. Good. And right now, I'll open the redirect to page action settings one more time, just to keep all the form field names close at hand. So let's copy the first field name for thumbnail and go back to the thank you page. Search for dynamic field widget and place it into the layout. In the source, choose query variable and enter the form field name under the variable name. Enable filter field output option and set callback to get image by ID. This way, it will show the actual picture of the vehicle on the front end and set the image size to full. Now, search for another dynamic field widget and place it underneath the thumbnail. Source will be the same query variable and just in case, guys, we'll use the same source for all fields. That is why let's duplicate it twice as for now. OK, select the second dynamic field widget in the layout. This one will go for the title of the vehicle. So let's go back to the form settings, copy the title field name and paste it into the variable name field. Good. Now open the style tab and set color to dark gray and typography font family, open sans, size 50 pixels, weight 700, and line height 
Also guys, if you wonder why you don't see anything changing here, that's because there is no information to show as of now. But don't worry, once we set everything up here and try to submit the form on the front end, it will work like a charm. So let's proceed with the price of the vehicle. Select the next dynamic field widget, go back to the form and copy price field name, then paste it into the variable name field, good. Enable filter field output and set callback to format number, in the decimal points set zero, then enable customize field output and set dollar sign in front of the value. OK, now let's proceed to the Style tab and set color to green, font family open sans, size 36 pixels, weight 700, line height 1.3. And let's select the next widget. Copy the location field name from the form and paste it into the variable field. Enable filter field output and set callback to get term name. Go to the style settings and set color to dark gray. Choose font family open sans, size 18 pixels, weight 400 and line height 1.5. Then let's proceed to the advanced settings tab and set the width to inline auto. OK. Now let's search for another dynamic field widget and place it underneath the description heading. Source, as you already know, query variable, variable name, copy it from the form and paste it right here, good. Then go to the style settings and change the color to light gray and set the same settings for typography as before. Family open sans, size 18 pixels, weight 400, line height 1.5. Pretty easy so far, right? OK, so let's search for another dynamic field widget one more time and place it into the first column under parameters. Select query variable as a source. After that, go to the style settings and set color to dark gray. Font family to open sans, size 18 pixels, weight 400, and line height 1.5. Then open advanced settings and change the width to inline auto. Now I'll suggest duplicating this widget to simply save time on styling further. So 5 plus 4, we need another 9 dynamic field widgets. So duplicate it again and again and again. Good. Now let's distribute them to each column in the layout. Great. So let's return to the transport type widget copy its field name and paste it into the variable name field. Good. Then select the mileage, copy its field name, paste it into the variable field, enable filter field output and choose format number as a callback, decimal points set to zero, Toggle Customize Field Output option on and add space kilometers at the end. Now let's proceed with the body type. Copy its name, paste it into the field, enable Filter Field Output and select Get Labels by Glossary Data, as this particular info is stored in the glossary. And in the Get Labels by Glossary, select Body Type. OK. After that, select Engine Type widget, copy its name, Engine Type, and paste it into the widget. Toggle Filter Field Output and repeat similar procedure. 
select Get Labels by Glossary Data and choose Engine Type from the list. Now let's proceed with the year, copy the name and paste it into the field. No additional settings are required here. Then go for the engine volume. So copy and paste its name. Enable filter field output and choose format number as a callback. Set decimal points to one. Enable customize field output option and set space and liters after the value. Okay, four more to go and we're almost done. So select the door widget, copy and paste its field's name. Great, now proceed with the transmission. Again, copy the field name, paste it into the variable name field, enable filter field output and choose get labels from glossary data and then select transmission label. And now let's do the same thing with the drive unit. Copy the name, paste it into the widget, enable filter field output, select get labels from glossary data and choose drive train. Okay, now last but not the least, select color widget, copy the name, Paste it right here, enable filter field output and set callback to get term name. Great! We're finally done with setting up dynamic widgets and now we can save the changes and proceed to the front end to submit the form with a new vehicle. So let's click on my ads to open the account page and then click on add new ad. Now give me a second to fill out the form. And now we can click on Submit or Add New Ad button. There we go. As you can see, all the values that we entered in the form were transferred to the thank you page with no problem. So now you know of another option that you can use while building your websites. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful and informative for your current and future projects. Don't hesitate to contact our support team if you still have any questions or issues, join our friendly Facebook community and stand with Ukraine. Cheers, guys!